Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we have another story about good old R. Kelly. We found out who jumped his ass in his cell. <sighs> There's no camping like having your best friend, the dog, around. But let us not prolong this story. Let's just jump right into it. R. Kelly's alleged attacker just ID'd himself in court documents. Claiming he's the one who beat up Kelly behind bars. And he has gang ties and murders on his record. Jeremiah Shane Farmer filed legal documents. Claiming he's the pissed off inmate who went on the attack and jumped Kelly in his jail cell. In the documents, Farmer claims the government made me attack. Kelly. In quotation marks, the government made me attack Kelly. Okay, now we're going to break this down in a second. What exactly does this mean the government made me do it? Okay, because you can't just say shit like that nowadays and it, man, there's going to be a million different theories on what the hell this guy is talking about. Although Farmer does not explain why the government made him attack Kelly, he does go on to say he pulled it off in hopes of shedding light on government corruption. As for what the corruption, quotation marks, is, he feels he was done dirty by the justice system. You can obviously see he's repping that five-point crown. He's got the five on his cheek, got a, another five-point crown with the cross on his eyebrows. And he's got about a million teardrops underneath his left eye. I'm pretty sure that's one sign that this dude has killed quite a bit of people. You know, some people that fake the funk get one. This fool has like 30. I'm pretty sure every teardrop on this guy's face is 100% legit. I'm just playing, man. Look, it's 2020. A teardrop can mean, hey, you just made your first cupcake in bacon class. I mean, everybody rocks teardrops, it seems like nowadays, and they ain't put in no damn work. Now, don't get it twisted. There's some people that got them teardrops that truly mean it. Like this homeboy, I'm pretty sure he means it. Look, I always tell y'all about you know, the other side of things, you know, so y'all can see what it is. But in all actuality in these gangs and shit, look, there's a lot of individuals, they don't join it for because they're weak or anything like that. These, these cats join it because, hey, that's their life. You know, that's what they end up loving. And a lot of these guys, their teardrops are legit. A lot of these guys are gangster to the core, man. You know, but I do sit here and tell you about a lot of the fake and phony shit that I see because that's the majority of what I see, but... Do not get it twisted. There's some killers and some go-hard cats in these gangs, man. So don't ever think that I'm trying to paint a picture that all gang members are weak. <laughs> They're not, my friends. Not all gang members are terrified. That's why they join gangs. No, it's not like that all the time. But anyways, Farmer's mission is part of legal documents filed in federal appeals court. Records show he's representing himself and is being housed at MCC just like Kelly. R. Kelly's attorney Steven Greenberg tells TMZ Farmer is indeed the one who attacked the singer. As we reported, our federal sources and Kelly's attorney said the inmate went on an attack because he was angry about MCC being placed on lockdown, largely due to Kelly protests outside the jail. Farmer also included a Bureau of Prisons incident report in his filing, which says the alleged attack happened around 9.45 a.m. right after them pancakes and SOS trays. On August 26th, I'm just playing, he didn't say pancake or SOS trays, but hey, it was right after breakfast time, it looks like. Well, it depends. Some places serve breakfast like 5 in the morning. The report says Farmer appeared to repeatedly punch Kelly in the head and torso with a prison employee using pepper spray to end the alleged assault. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Indiana says Farmer is a Latin Kings gang member and was convicted last year after a jury found he beat two men to death with a hammer as part of a racketeering conspiracy. This dude Farmer, man, he was putting in some serious work even on the streets. It says that he killed two people with the hammer, a part of a racketeering conspiracy. So that means if they convicted him of those murders for racketeering, that means it was a part of some kind of gang shit. That's what I get from it. So this guy's putting in work for the gang on the streets. I don't think he's putting in work for the gang on R. Kelly. I think he's just doing it because he's literally pissed off. He said the government made me do it. What I think that means is not the government paid farmer or something like that to go attack Kelly. Who is Kelly for 
the government to give two shits about. The government's probably sitting back like, this dude's gonna get fried in the courtroom, man, you know? I almost can guarantee they ain't pay this guy or talk to him to do this, like, some kind of planned hit or something. I seriously doubt that, because if that was the case, the dude's already killed multiple people. Look all the damn teardrops. He's already killed two people with a hammer on a train. You don't think he would have went in a cell with a shank instead of just hitting him in the torso and the head? Nah, it wasn't no planned hit like y'all might think by the wording of this article and how the government made me attack him. I believe it's when he says that, the government made me attack him, meaning they keep locking us down. The system keeps locking us down. The system keeps doing this to me. The system keeps doing that to me. So, of course, he's going to say the government made me do it. You know, in a sense of, hey, he just snapped. He's tired of this shit. And that's the only way that he can get across to people. But in all actuality, he probably just did that shit to get his name and face plastered on the tabloids. But we can't sit here and say for sure what exactly happened and why. But I'm going to keep following this story. I don't know what to think about it too much. or giving you kind of bland, bland uh, quotes here, you know, without too much to go off of. But R. Kelly got blessed, you know, for real, because this guy's a killer. This guy's a straight up killer, man. And... He's lucky he ain't coming there with a shank, you know? And this is what I'm trying to figure out. Is R. Kelly in PC of any kind? Because he's obviously being housed with gang members, Latin King member, that's got multiple bodies on his record. I can almost guarantee that R. Kelly is not in PC. I think he's in general population. Is there anybody in the comment section that can answer this for me? And another thing that makes me realize that it wasn't just some kind of planned hit or something is, if it was a planned hit and they really wanted to make sure that Kelly was done for. It ain't gonna be just one guy going in there for the most part. It probably would have been at least two. At least two or three to make sure that the job is done, especially when you're dealing with gang violence. Usually gang members never go in alone, man. Never. It's always, they always got someone to back them up. I mean, think about it. If you're in a gang and you get, you, you get put out there to do something, I mean, sometimes every once in a while they'll, they'll send you on a solo mission, but for the most part, there's always someone lagging behind them. Wait to see and make sure that he's all right. And if he's not, he's going to jump into it. You might not see him. He might be around the corner, just two cells down, but he's there almost every time. But if they really want to get him out of there, like I said, they would have they sent more people. They would have had weapons and all that other shit, man. They probably just wanted a little bit of clout. This guy looks like a damn psychopath anyway, man. He probably ain't all there in the head. Definitely ain't all there in the head if he's killing two people with a hammer on the train. R. Kelly's going through it, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, he is, but hey, life comes back around. You dish out a lot of shit, a lot of shit's gonna come right back your way. You know, and that's how I always look at things sometimes. If I can't prove that guy's living a shitty life, I'll know within at least a couple years later. I'll be like, oh, he's doing horrible now. Oh, damn, he done got shot in the back and all this other shit. Well, hey, I knew it was gonna come around sooner or later. I strongly believe it does. I don't believe in the word karma, but I do believe you do unto others and it will be coming right back to you. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed, ladies and gentlemen. Please do not forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell before you leave. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what y'all think about this whole story. And stay tuned in the next day or so. I got a bunch of other crazy stories coming your way. You know, the story slowed up. The story slowed up like the breaking news stories because when it comes to prison news content, as of the last, whenever the pandemic started, it's been nothing but like COVID cases, you know, on the news headlines. And there ain't really been nothing to really talk about other than that. But now, recently, there's been a lot of new stories coming out, a lot of new crime that I'm going to be bringing y'all's way. So stay tuned. I got some interviews still coming y'all's way, but it's not going to be for a while because I'm just taking a little bit of a break from that. Um, and also, I wanted to mention one thing. I know a lot of people probably noticed that the majority, except for three of my review videos, have been deleted. Why did I delete them? The reasoning behind me deleting these review videos is because it's not my content, man. Even though I'm following the rules and regulations and making it copyright worthy, meaning I did it in a right way to where I don't get a copyright strike. Okay, that's what I'm meaning. So... Even though I did it in the right way and all that stuff, it's still not my content, man. And I don't want nothing that's not mine on this channel. Except for those three that I left. Just because they were the most important ones in my eyes. Because they got the most views. Gotta keep them jammies in the motion. It's just, just not my thing, man. 
You know, I don't want this channel to become anywhere near or closely identified as a review channel. I apologize to all the review fans out there, but I'm going to be bringing some more stuff your way. Not reviews, but stuff that will still draw your attention. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I salute every last one of you who been supporting me since the beginning. And everybody who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound, I love every last one of y'all, man. Stay on that consistent and honest path, and I guarantee you will be paid back what you put in.